Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai, new thinking, new possibilities. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily, where our job is to help keep you up to speed on some of the most important developments in the global automotive industry. Land Rover is demonstrating an awesome head-up display with augmented reality that is one of the most sensational technological developments we have ever seen. Land Rover calls it the transparent bonnet for those of you who speak the King's English, or it calls it the transparent hood for the rest of us. The system uses cameras on the front of this Land Rover Discovery concept vehicle, which makes it look as if the hood is transparent and lets you see exactly where the front wheels are in relation to the road. This would be especially beneficial in tight off-road situations. And this is just the beginning of a new trend where automakers will be combining augmented reality with HUDs to create a visually dynamic driving experience. AR with HUD is going to revolutionize navigation systems. Just imagine Google Earth projected onto your windshield. Bentley just introduced a concept with plug-in hybrid technology, which it will display at the Beijing show next week. The new powertrain is being previewed in its flagship, the Mulsanne, but the technology will first show up in its upcoming SUV that debuts in 2017. The company says its hybrids will be able to travel up to 50 kilometers, about 31 miles, on electric power only. And by the end of the decade, Bentley says 90% of the vehicles it produces will offer plug-in technology. Ford likes to brag that the Focus is the best-selling nameplate in the world. Last year, registrations topped 1.09 million units, and that's up 8% from the year before. To keep the momentum going, take a look at this refreshed version of the four-door sedan that will debut next week at the New York Auto Show. It features a redesigned hood and new grille that's similar to the Fiesta and Fusion. It also gets the one-liter EcoBoost and a new six-speed manual. It also gets a rear-view camera, blind spot detection, and a lane-keeping system. Speaking of refreshes, the Fiat 500 is getting a new instrument panel with a digital 7-inch high-def cluster display that's configurable to show different vehicle information. It's standard on most trims, including the Abart. Other updates include Bluetooth streaming audio, an additional USB port, and a redesigned center console. The 2015 Fiat 500 hits dealerships this July in the American market. Hey, have you heard that the UAW just voted to approve a strike at the assembly plant that makes the Chevrolet Corvette? You might think, wait a minute, I thought the UAW was barred from holding strikes until 2015 as part of the government bailout agreement. And you'd be right if you thought about that, except there was a clause that allowed the union to strike over health and safety concerns. And that's what the union says this is about. But in my experience, When the UAW says a strike is about health and safety, you can be sure of one thing. It has nothing to do with health and safety. Here's what I see going on. Demand for the new Corvette is going through the roof and supplies are extremely tight. That gives the union a lot of leverage. Also, the assembly plant has a brand new plant manager. They want to test this guy. Apparently, the plant eliminated a couple of quality control inspectors, and obviously, the union wants those jobs reinstated. That is what this is really about. But you know what? As any manufacturing expert will tell you, you cannot inspect quality into a product. You have to build quality into a product. And I can't understand why the UAW would want to shut down the hottest car that General Motors has at a time when the corporation is going through a public relations crisis with this ignition recall. And the union can't understand why none of the transplants want the UAW to organize their workers. Anyway, that's my AutoLine Insight. And oh boy, we still haven't run out of news to report on. Coming up next, a look at a simple, inexpensive way to make engines more efficient and some driving impressions of the brand new 
Honda Fit. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. All this week, automotive engineers from all around the world are gathering in Detroit for the Society of Automotive Engineers World Congress. One of the more intriguing presentations comes from the Southwest Research Institute, which is working on what it calls a dedicated EGR engine. It can provide a 15% fuel economy improvement while meeting Sulev emission standards. And it looks like it's fairly inexpensive to implement. Take a look. We segregate one loop of the engine so that one cylinder provides all of the exhaust gas that is recirculated back into the intake manifold. In our case, we choose to run it in a fuel-rich environment which means that the excess fuel is converted into hydrogen and CO. The hydrogen and CO, which is reformate, uh, provides an octane boost, a flammability boost, extends the EGR limit of the engine. The other three cylinders are run at a stoichiometric air fuel ratio, fuel being composed of the gasoline and the reformate, so that their exhaust is completely compatible with today's low emissions technologies. Uh, when considering the high efficiency alternatives that are out there today, uh, at Southwest Research Institute, we feel that our dedicated EGR technology uh, is not only a high efficiency, low emissions alternative, but it's the most cost effective, market ready solution available today. I know that's a lot to digest in a short amount of time, but you can always click on the link in today's show notes to learn more about this engine. And if you're not familiar with the Southwest Research Institute, we can tell you they've been around a long time and have a lot of respect in this industry. I got a chance to drive the new Honda Fit a couple of weeks ago, and while we showed you some of the highlights of the car then, today is the day that the company lifted the embargo on our driving impressions. And it's my impression that this is one terrific little car. We already told you about the packaging magic that Honda baked into this little subcompact, giving it the roomiest interior in its class by far. One of the most noticeable differences with the new model is that it's equipped with Honda's own CVT, which provides better fuel economy than the six-speed manual. And as in the Accord, the CVT behaves more like a conventional automatic with none of that rubber banding feel. The engine does sound buzzy when you accelerate from a low speed, but that's true of all the cars in this class. It also has electric power assisted steering, but it feels solid and direct, which Honda says is thanks to a torque sensor to provide better feedback. With a base price just over $17,000, this is quite an affordable car by today's standards, and Honda expects to sell a lot more fits in the American market than it ever has in the past. And that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for watching and please join us again tomorrow.